Unfortunately, it does happen to me sometimes. <laughs> I'll be walking down the street and hear a fucker. And whenever I hear it, it just fills me with joy. I love it. So if you do see me on the street, yell fucker. That's how you get on my good side. That's how. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ben Stiller, and Esquire has asked me to explain some things about my career. So, uh, I'm looking forward to this. Let's do it. We created so many characters that have gone on to become part of the American zeitgeist. Which ones do fans bring up the most? Well, that's nice of you to say it. Of the characters, I'd say Derek Zoolander definitely comes up a lot, which is funny to me just because I think when we made the movie, nobody really thought it was gonna work necessarily or even knew why we were doing it. Weirdly, this movie, Heavyweights, that I did a long time ago, where I played this character, Tony Perkis. He's a very mean character, Tony Perkis, and he kind of relates a little bit to White Goodman, who is another fitness-crazed, mean person. I guess Derek Zoolander is kind of a fitness crazed, nice person. So, so far the theme is fitness crazed. Cable Guy. Cable Guy. I had a great time directing Cable Guy. I mean, Jim, he is one of those funny people who likes to make you laugh. He'll keep doing something that's funny until you stop laughing at it. The other person who's like that, I find, is Gilbert Gottfried. And it's the most enjoyable thing ever because they just keep doing it. There's a scene where a spider crawls across his face and we got a real spider and just put it on his face. And seeing him sort of keep his dead-eyed look, you know, his like kind of crazy cable guy look while the spider kept on crawling back and forth across his face. And I could see the joy inside of him as an actor and just insane comedian. I mean, this was one of my favorite experiences ever making Tropic Thunder because it was a project that had been gestating for a long time and probably the initial idea for the movie had come from me when I was doing Empire of the Sun back in 1987 and had a small part in this really huge war film and it seemed like every actor my age was going in for auditions on war movies at that time. Actors take themselves so seriously and you have to do that to a certain extent but it's also really easy to have fun with that. Tom Cruise had the idea to play Les Grossman in the movie. That part did not exist. He said, well, there's no studio executive and you know that would be really fun to be that guy. And so he had this whole idea of what the guy should look like. It was his idea to dance. And I remember when we did a makeup test, somebody handed him a Diet Coke and then he just started moving. And it's almost like his movement reminded me of the gopher in Caddyshack, the way the gopher dances in Caddyshack. I mean, the, the scene that I remember the most would be the first scene that I had to shoot with Robert De Niro just because he's so intimidating as an actor and a person if you don't know him. I cracked up the first scene we did together. I literally broke up laughing because he did something funny. And as an actor, you don't want to laugh in the scene because it you know, makes the other actor think you're not taking it seriously. And I totally lost it and cracked up. And I think it was because also because I was so nervous. And then he like looked at me and then he started laughing a little bit. And then when he started laughing, I, I felt a little more relieved. And then I remember we shot a scene in a car where he's like asking me if I'm a pothead. We'd do the scene and then the car would have to go back around to the beginning part of where the scene would start. So like, I remember we just have to sit in the car together, De Niro and I, and like kind of make small talk. And that was really uncomfortable. I, I remember thinking that I wish they were rolling the camera because this is even more uncomfortable than what, what's on camera. <laughs> I think anybody who knows Jennifer feels this incredible sense of warmth and appreciation of her because she's such a sweetheart. She's a sweetheart, she's such a sweet person, and she's very caring of her fellow actors, and she's just so supportive. I've always just really liked her. I, it was fun doing that episode, being able to channel my anger and, uh, <laughs> also at that time, because Friends was such a phenomenon, and they were all very, cool and nice and, and welcoming into their family. And you could tell they really had a family there. And, and then, you know, doing uh, Along Came Polly with Jennifer was so much fun. You know, another fun scene, like the last scene in the movie where we had to kind of walk hand in hand without clothing on. And I remember her making me feel very, uh, she gave me a safe space to do it, which I appreciated. Well, Curb Your Enthusiasm was really fun because Larry has everybody improvise the whole show. He encourages this energy between actors where there's a lot of like tension or arguing happening. I really enjoyed it. It was really fun. Like the most fun scene I remember doing was like we're in the car and I'm upset that like I feel like I'm his chauffeur or something. Yes. Yeah. Why? What's the difference? Larry, I'm not going to drive you around like I'm your chauffeur. Get in the.
front seat, all right? <laughs> you don't drive me around like my chauffeur. You know, the fun thing is like you can just keep going with it. And with Larry, you don't feel like you can go too far, really, because that's kind of like what the show is about. Ben Stiller, Owen Wilson, surprises Zoolander characters of Valentino. What was it like to really walk a runway? One of the most terrifying experiences I've ever had. <laughs> it's so serious. Those shows are so serious and it's such a big deal. We had literally just walked around in a circle. So it was kind of like this triumph of like, wait, we did it, we did it. Wait, 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 what did we do? We walked. Yeah. Yeah, Tony Wonder, just fun to be Tony Wonder because everything was being, you know, it's always just presenting something, even if it's not that great a trick. I know one trick, I know one coin trick because I did take magic lessons when I was a kid with a famous magician named the great Slidini, who was a real close-up magician. And my dad arranged for me to have lessons with him in his apartment, and he had this amazing trick. He'd take somebody out from the audience, put them up on stage, he'd sit them in front of him, he'd take a box of Kleenex, and he would pull the Kleenex out, and he'd make the Kleenex disappear in front of the person. But then, if you're sitting off stage watching in the audience, you would see that he was flipping the Kleenex over their head. So I learned this one trick, but I wasn't really good at it, and I used to do it on my sister all the time. And so I basically like always be scrunching up a Kleenex in front of her and then flipping it over her head. And she'd say, why are you doing that stupid thing where you throw the Kleenex over my head? And I'd be like, this is an amazing illusion by the great Slidini. Ah, uh, 70s characters, Anchorman, Starsky and Hutch. I mean, I love the 70s. I grew up in the 70s. It's probably my favorite era. That's probably why I wanted to do Starsky and Hutch. I think the Anchorman idea of like what a middle-aged guy in the 70s, you know, what it was to be cool and to be, you know, smoking cigarettes and drinking scotch and having ridiculous hair. I mean, my parents were actors in the 70s. My dad had that look. He had this crazy, amazing, like wavy, curly hair, big mustache, sideburns. He went through a phase where he smoked cigars for a little while, which is a very 70s thing. My parents would do nightclubs and they had a comedy act and they would wear tuxedo and my mom would wear a gown and it was great. So, you know, to me, the 70s are just like ingrained in my DNA. Describe the severance procedure and would you personally choose it? Okay, so severance is a procedure where you have a chip implanted into your brain and that chip, when triggered, will cut off your memories of your life. And so when you go to work, you don't remember anything about your life or know who you are. You just do your job and then when you leave work, you don't remember anything that happened at work. I would not ever say yes to this. I sometimes think though, when I wake up in the morning, it feels a little bit like being severed because I have memories of my dreams and who knows, maybe we're all having a secret life when we're asleep or not. Reality Bites totally summed up the angst of Generation X. The question is, if you were to direct a movie about 20 year olds in 2022, what would you call it? You know, I mean, maybe the name of the movie now would be Reality Still Bites. Reality Bites More. What is Reality Bites? I think the answer is I would not be the person to make a movie about 20 year olds in 2022. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, this was fun. I hope you guys enjoy Severance. It's a good thing I didn't sever my memory from the memories of these characters that you just were asking questions about. Otherwise this would have been a really short segment. <laughs>